welcome to my new news update, Parrot's Flower Power. This wacky new product is a smart sensor that you can insert into a pot to monitor the plant's environmental variables, sunlight, humidity, temperature, and fertilizer. I'm going to read you a short little article on Parrot's Flower Power from ngadget.com. For a company that usually makes Bluetooth audio products, this sure is a weird product coming from Parrot, but we dig it. Pun intended. This fresh company has announced its flower power at CES. CES. Cats eat snakes? Hmm, weird. The data that the flower power inputs is sent via Bluetooth to the cloud for analysis before coming back to your mobile device. And you'll be able to look up Parrot's library of thousands of plants for the extra care for your herbal friends. No price has been announced for the flower power just yet. That means it's gonna be big bucks, okay? So don't get your hopes up, people, if you want this. When they actually do come out with a price, which is kind of silly that they haven't come out with a price yet, but when they actually do, I'm sorry, but it's gonna be big bucks. That is my prediction. Oh, wait, there's an update here. It says, during our stage interview, Parrot CEO, Henry Sidorks, sorry for pronouncing your name incorrectly, Hyrein Sidorks, confirmed that the flower power can also measure the soil's pH level. So all is good. Yeah, that's the end of the article. Personally, this product sounds like a quack quack, and I don't know why you would need this. I don't think this flower power is gonna help you at all. The best it's probably gonna do is to remind you to water your plant. I wouldn't put my time into it, but if you have the history of killing your potted plants indoors, then Parrot's Flower Power could be your solution. This is not a commercial, and I'm not trying to sell you this product. Now we are in the craft room, and I'm gonna show you how to sew a pillow. Just a simple little pillow that'll be about this big. It's just gonna be kind of giving you the basics on how to use this baby right here, this sewing machine, okay? What you're gonna wanna do first is grab your piece of fabric. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You're gonna need to cut it like this. Cut it halfway down. And if you wanna make your pillow bigger, then you're just gonna need to have it a bigger piece of fabric. So then you're gonna cut that piece in half. And that'll be your pillow. Now what you have to do first is to make sure your two pieces are perfectly lined up. Like so. Begin with one side and stick it there. Grab the lever and that'll take the foot down. Now simply all you have to do is push the little magic lever down on the floor and it'll start sewing for you. Now you gotta remember to try and keep it as straight as possible. And the faster you go, the better it works. Gonna go all the way through. And then, push the foot up, pull it out, and cut it on the side here. Now we have one side done, three more to go. Now we're sewing. Now we got two sides done. Now we have three sides, and the very most important part of this, to not sew the fourth side until you've stuffed the inside because of the pillow. We got our 100% premium polyester fiber fill, AKA stuffing. Not like Thanksgiving stuffing, but for like pillows and stuff. <laughs> stuff, stuffing, pillows and stuff. <laughs> funny. Anyway, so you grab a handful of stuffing, you stuff it into this pillow we got here. Only thing left to do is to sew this last side. And there you have it. We finished our pillow. Isn't it nice? You can sleep on it. If anyone of you would like to buy this pillow that I have sewn for you on the show, please let me know via the comments below. Five dollars. And that is how you sew a pillow. It's time to play the Atari 2600. This is the Atari 2600, and these are all the games. It's always so hard to decide which game to play. That's why I just close my eyes and randomly pick one. Pitfall, my favorite. It works every time. To all you gamers out there, this is the newest and coolest game system, the Atari 2600. I bought it at Walmart just a couple days ago. Here's the joystick. It's joyful to play with it. <laughs> Funny one. I'm in a jokey mood today. One thing you always need to have when you play any video game is one of these cool chairs. Yeah. These are awesome. Let's play some Pitfall. Here we go. Ooh.
this music. It's the best part of the game. It's so groovy. Great sound effects, great graphics. Everything is great with this game. Huh. Really get in this game. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Power up. I'm gonna make it across. Yes. 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 I'm winning this game. I hate this game. The Atari is so much fun. I could play this for hours. As long as I don't play Frogger. I'm really bad at that game. Well, it's been a fun and un-outdoors day with Chip's activities. Man, I missed the outdoors today. We were inside for all three activities. I hope you enjoyed those activities I showed you today. New videos every Tuesday, right here on Austin Hegley's YouTube channel. Next week for the newest episode of Austin's Old Videos. And in two weeks for episode nine of Chip's activities. I hope you had fun today and we will see you in two weeks on Chip's Activities. Goodbye!